Hello everyone. It's a month ago that we've been saying Happy New Year. The first month of the year 2021 is history. For the last day of January, there were two comments that stuck with me. Oscar C53 said, Winston, love your videos, even though I'm agnostic. I've been watching you now for years my problem is in the Bible as a true book. There are so many things in that book that could be in any fantasy book and the concept of God that most Christians were taught. As a former JW, I'm thankful for your work in helping people see the truth about the truth. Thank you, Oscar, for that. Years ago, when I got started into network marketing, my upline, that is the person who introduced you to the business, gave me a series of six tapes by Les Brown, one of the best motivational speakers I've listened to. He's really good. And I would listen to his tape, you know, choosing your future. It's possible. It's necessary. It's you. It's hard. It's done. I, it was a beautiful series that Les Brown did. This after first being introduced to Les Brown while I was in a previous employment. And I would listen to those tapes over and over. Because in them, I found so much wisdom. Then I got to reading the book of Proverbs and Solomon and um, Ecclesiastes again. And while I was reading, I'm saying to myself, who needs Les Brown? All the wisdom that Brown presented in his motivational speeches seem to be covered in the scriptures, written so many years ago. The principles of morality, of, of kindness, don't get me wrong. There are people who do not believe in the Bible, but teach these principles to their children. So I'm not of the view that the Bible is the only place where this is found. There are so many historical records that back up what the Bible says. When I read the book of Daniel and see how Daniel was able to accurately predict the rise and falls of the world's major nations. That for me is awesome. You talk about fairy tales. The idea of a God creating the world from nothing really does sound like a fairy tale. It really does. It really sounds like a fairy tale and God said, let there be light and there was light. It sounds ridiculous that a man or a being could have no beginning. How do you understand no beginning, no ending? Isn't it hard to comprehend that someone, one being, has been alive while your forefathers was alive and is still alive today? One being, being alive from 6,000 B.C. and is still alive today. One being, being alive in the year 1200 and still alive today. It sounds 
like a fairy tale. Baffling, isn't it? Also baffling for me and for scientists is how the caterpillar becomes a butterfly. Does that sound to you like something from a fairy tale? How, how fish are able to breathe in oxygen in water. You mean the same oxygen that I am breathing in as air, fish breathing in through their gills. Amazing, isn't it? The point I'm making, my brother, is that there are so many things that I do not understand, so many. And I believe in one thing, creation, because evolution makes absolutely no sense to me. I can understand the difficulty in believing what the Bible says, but it is significantly more difficult for me to believe, as I've said so many times, that the caterpillar and the butterfly just came about by some big bang or some evolution without a designer. That cannot add up. That is much harder for me to accept than there being a creator. And if there is a creator, chances are he's a little bit wiser than you and I because he would have been our creator. He designed our amazing brain. He must know something that you and I don't know. And regarding the errors in the scriptures, this is not something that I'm hearing about for the first time. This is not something that I have not confirmed for myself. I've seen contradictions in the scriptures. I've watched videos, read articles about these contradictions in the scriptures, and my faith in the Bible as the word of God has not been daunted because I am also aware that we do not have original manuscripts. We have copies of copies of copies. I challenge you to get 10 people together, 10 honest people, not one of them is a liar, get them together, whisper something in the ears of one and ask that one to pass it on to the 10th person. And I guarantee you, the message is going to be slightly, if not completely changed. Where there are, where there are translation upon translation upon translation from copies of copies of copies, it is, in my view, impossible for it to have, for it to have been perfectly translated without error. I find that very inconceivable to imagine. So why do I still believe in the scriptures? Because the fundamental things make all the sense in the world. The fundamental principles of the scriptures make all the sense in the world. And it is amazing because I believe what answers the problem is something that is written in the scriptures, something that Jesus said. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I am ashamed to admit it. Someone, I saw this on someone's WhatsApp status and I'm wondering, what? Why have I not seen this before? And it is from the book of Matthew that I have read several times. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Sometimes in life we are so careful about the minor details, the minor things that we do not want to hurt us. And we end up 
taking on a much more dangerous thing. I have my, the, the, the point I am making is that I look on the bigger picture. And the Bible, I, there is nothing, I have never read a book quite like the scriptures. I love it. I trust it. I believe it. And I am not daunted by the little errors. I believe there is a God. I believe that the Bible's account of life is the most sensible account there is and history that I have found I may not be able to convince you, but I'm just responding to your comment because I believe there are so many other persons out there who are stumbled by this. And I'm hoping that my perspective can help somewhat, if at all possible. Then comes what I call the comment of the day. Both comments were important, but the, the upcoming one was really something. Krista Erica said, Winston, I must say it's awesome to see another fellow Jamaican who is covering this kind of material. I'm so proud of you for all the work that you do. I'm hailing you from the parish of St. Catherine. Your videos have helped me to quit doing Bible study. I was on the path of becoming a witness and I was even discouraged not to watch videos like yours by my Bible study teacher. She would call it apostate information. There are many reasons I stopped studying, but most importantly, I am a mother of a six-month-old should she turn out to live an ungodly life, I have no interest in shunning her. Anyways, I continue to do research on the organization on a daily basis. My Bible study teacher's husband is an elder in their congregation and I spoke to him once and he tried explaining their generation theory to me and I was unable to grasp it. He mentioned someone that he referred to by the name of Brother Franz, and I looked him up, and it turns out he was disfellowshipped. I was given the impression that he was anointed one because he witnessed whatever special event they said happened in 1914. Can you please do some research on this guy and why he got disfellowshipped if he was seen as an anointed one? Believe it or not, the majority of subscribers and viewers to this channel are from the United States. Of course, they are from all over the world, but the majority, United States. And it always does my heart well to see someone commenting from my own country. And it, it, it is special to me. I am happy that through this effort that one person from my country can confirm to me that as a result of this, she has decided not to progress with where she was going. And I am particularly touched. The one, the number one reason she decided that she doesn't want to be a part of this because she has a baby, just a baby, not yet a year old. And she's a mother. She's looking on her child as a mother should. And her love for her child is what a mother's love for a child ought to be, unconditional. And it is so very interesting, ladies and gentlemen, because I do believe that if many persons understood beforehand the shunning policy, they probably, like this sister, would never, ever continue in that organization. 
there was just so much that she said. I liked the little bit where her Bible study teacher told her not to watch videos like these. It is posti apostate information. I really like that. You know, do not watch videos like those. It is apostate information. This propaganda seems to be losing its effect as more and more Jehovah's Witnesses are watching quote-unquote apostate information. But I am particularly glad that someone is doing the research before she gets caught up in this. And I feel so honored, so absolutely privileged to have had the opportunity to assist. One of the things that I really appreciate about viewers to this channel is how they just chip in and assist when the need calls. Because before I had the opportunity to respond to Erica, Emma May gave a fulsome response. Thank you, Emma. Explaining who Raymond Franz is. I actually did two videos, my sister, where I read excerpts from that book. From one of the books done by written by Raymond Franz, as Emma explained, Crisis of Conscience. I actually did two videos in this series. Video 8, Watchtower Dishonesty. Video 9, Watchtower Stupidity and Arrogance. Reading excerpts from the book, one of the books that was written by Raymond Franz, as Emma pointed out. Crisis of Conscience, and I've placed links in the description so you can actually watch those videos to see what Raymond Franz has to say. Of course, his book can be found at Amazon, and I believe you can also find a PDF copy of it. Pretty interesting reading. So, once again, thanks for making the comment. I am so happy that you have not progressed with this thing. So happy that you have the, the fortitude, the wisdom to see exactly what this organization is in the very thought that it could ask you to shun your own child. Thanks for commenting. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep the comments coming. They play a very important role in helping Jehovah's Witnesses to wake up. Do you realize how Emma's comment was important here in assisting Erica? It's not just Erica. It's the many other persons who are watching these videos and have questions. Thanks again. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Love you all. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.